Okay, quick intro to the Garmin S60 watch. First is how to uh, interact with it. It's really four ways. The first one is this upper right hand button. It's called the action key. That usually um, takes some action within an application. More on that later. Oh, I just got a notification. The second way is uh, the back button. So if you were to go into the action key, takes you to golf. If you want to go back, you hit this bottom right key. Uh, the third one is the settings button. It's this middle button right here. Let you uh, get into various settings. And then the fourth way, we hit that again, is to scroll. So it does have a touch screen. You can tap on some things like tap on watch face uh, or you can scroll and uh, that's how that works. Okay, the next feature I want to talk about are widgets. Just from the uh, watch face, if you scroll up, it will give you a set of uh, information called widgets. This is steps. That's the last uh, golf game I had, uh, etc., etc. Uh, you can modify what widgets appear by going back to the watch face and then hitting the settings key and scroll to settings app and then uh, on widgets you can see the ones that I have listed here uh, I can either add another widget like a calendar or if I want to turn off a widget for example I don't want uh, weather data I can click on that and disable that and go back and go back and go back and now on the watch face if I scroll through there is no longer weather data that's how you do widgets okay the next feature is apps that's really the main purpose of the watch is to execute the golf app if you hit the action button it will take you to the default application which is golf but if you want to actually use it to do something else these little four dots down here let you get at the other applications that are on the watch by default swing tempo true swing variety of other applications you can add applications by hitting the plus button here which will take you to different apps you can add if you want to or you can go back and go back the other way to do that is to go into settings scroll down to the settings button hit apps and activities and then this will give you your current list of apps that are on that default screen and if you want to get rid of one for example if you don't swim can click that and disable it uh, like that and then finally uh, if you're inside of an app you go back to the watch and go to action key and hit an app and let's say I want to interact with walk I can hit the settings button and when I'm in the walk app then hitting the setting button will will give me walk settings by default so that's how you uh, interact with settings in particular applications okay the final section before I get into the golf uh, specific functions is uh, some more advanced watch features that you might not otherwise find out about if you hold the settings button down press it and hold it'll take you to an alternate screen where there's uh, eight additional functions at 12 o'clock we've got the ability to power the watch on and off at two o'clock we can lock the watch and that will it'll keep acting like a regular watch but if you try to scroll on this or hit the action button it'll have no effect so to turn uh, lock off you just hold the settings button again and lock has been turned off going back into those eight settings on the right hand side here at three o'clock we have the find my phone feature that will ring your phone Let's see if I can hit that there it uh, rang my phone I can stop that 
That, of course, only works if your watch is actively paired via Bluetooth to your phone. So it's really not very useful to find a phone anywhere other than maybe in your golf bag or in your car or somewhere in the same room. Uh, down here at 5 o'clock, we have the sync function, which will initiate a sync with the Garmin Connect app. So if you've got uh, data on here that you want to connect with your app, that's how you do it. At 6 o'clock is a little moon sign that does a do not disturb on and off. With do not disturb on, it will not give you any notifications at all. won't buzz, it, buzz at you. It's telling you to start moving, etc. At 7 o'clock, we have the music uh, app function, which is somewhat useful. If you want to turn on or off the whatever is playing audio on your phone, uh, you can go to that and, and do that. It's somewhat useful for those that leave their phone in the golf cart and maybe play music. You can turn it off uh, with that function. Uh, over here on at 9 o'clock, we have the a little phone icon, which is essentially just disconnecting with your phone or reconnecting with it. That's if you do not want to get notifications from your phone or say that the phone's ringing. Uh, the last function is a timer function, which you can set with the edit button and go through whatever timer you want set. Uh, if you go into that and you want to start the timer, it'll start counting down from whatever you've set the timer function uh, to, to do. I guess in theory, the three minute rule for looking for a lost ball, if you were anal about keeping track of that, you could use that function. So there are the uh, eight advanced setting functions you might not know about. Okay, let's get into the real reason you got the watch to play golf. Let's start the golf application. You hit the action key and it takes you to the golf app. You can either tap or hit this key, either one. I'll tap. It's going to locate satellites. I've previously located them. And nearest me is Woods Valley Golf Course, which is where I play occasionally. I'll pick that. It loads the course. It asks me if I want to keep score. I do. Uh, it asks me what uh, tees I'm going to play off of. I'll play white. And it takes me to the first hole. And a couple of things about what you see here is... First, the main function of the watch, as you probably already know, is it gives you the distance to the center of the green. So 392 from the tee is the distance to the center. 408 is the back. 376 is the front of the green. One other feature that is uh, maybe you didn't know about is if you tap on the numbers, uh, it will give you some icons to the left to tell you that uh, the hole plays either shorter or longer depending on elevation. So in this case, it is slightly downhill. So it's only 388 instead of 392. Uh, that might matter on some shorter holes. Uh, so know about that. Uh, next thing is uh, you can um, hit the, the uh, fairway picture on the right-hand side and it will zoom in to where you have said your average driver distance goes to. So I've marked that as 240. The way you set that is if you go into the settings button uh, within the application, you can do this outside as well and go to golf settings. You go to golf settings and under driver distance, I've said, hey, 240 is the amount I go truth is I only drive about 200 on average but I've driven as far as 245 I believe and I happen to find that the zoomed in function that I get with this at 240 in general provides me a better view of what the traps are um, etc so that's what happens when you tap there's a couple of buttons here. One is the minus button that zooms out and gives you a complete hole view. One thing to notice is that there are 
three dots on the screen the blue one at the bottom yellow in the middle and red at the top that represents the 200 150 and 100 markers from the green um, so that can be useful for various situations uh, next thing is uh, if you use me I'll show you that in a minute uh, if you zoom back in you can tap anywhere on the screen oops I tap the sorry about that I'll go back in see a little finicky it is if I tap on the green view at the top right or the top rather sorry um, it will zoom into the green I can move the flag around so if the flags in the front my courses that means the, I have a red flag or if it's in the middle it's usually white or yellow at the back depending on the size of the green that can affect the distance um, so that will uh, you can tune that it will stay uh, that way only for this round uh, otherwise it will default back to the middle uh, so that keep that in mind if I go back and tap again one last function is uh, if you'd like to know the distance to a particular spot on the on the course this one doesn't happen to have any uh, bunkers oh, I think there's one right there zoom in uh, so I'll zoom in there you can see that there's a bunker out at 305 no danger of that but the the fastest way to get to looking at where the bunkers are in my opinion is in this zoomed out view you can tap anywhere on the screen and it'll give you a cursor with a split distance of of uh, where you've tapped and how far it is to the green and I tend to use this to find distances to bunkers or hazards etc and then when you zoom in um, when that is selected it will jump to wherever that uh, I the uh, icon is you can exit out of that mode by hitting the back button and then it will just give you the normal ability to scroll uh, on the screen I do find this a little sluggish uh, but if you take the time to do it it can be useful so that is how you interact with the basic golf uh, screen when you get on the uh, the course okay now that you know how to interact with the basic watch function uh, let's start out on the golf course it defaults as you see to hole number one if you want to start in a different hole for example the back nine you can scroll up or down to select holes that's pretty convenient or a faster way to do it is to hold your finger down up at 12 o'clock and scroll around the edge and you can move to hole number 10 so let's say we want to tee off on hole number 10 you get up you get your driver out uh, you go up to the tee box and you drive after you've hit your ball you should look down at your watch and it will be asking you what club did you just use if it did not ask you uh, which club you've used then you have not set it up to do that yet so if you go into settings and go to golf settings and under uh, I believe it's scoring sorry under scoring uh, it will under club tracking you have to have that turned on otherwise it will not ask you what club you just used so that's uh, how you set that go back go back go back uh, go back and then f finally uh, uh, one of the one of the issues in doing these videos at home is since I'm not out on the course it's it won't uh, detect my shot so I need to simulate how to score so one way to do that is to hit this upper right button hit the pencil and then if I 
tap on hole number 10 after you've putted out this is the screen you'll see typically and it'll ask you how you did on the hole you're playing so you can advance or subtract uh, you hit next it will ask you how many putts you did uh, you can say you got two putts uh, if you hit next it'll ask you how many penalties um, if it does not ask you these questions besides just the basic score then you don't have stat tracking on so if you again go into settings by hitting the let me stop that score go into settings golf settings scoring and under stat tracking that needs to be turned on uh, so that is how you keep score on the watch okay and finally some more of the advanced features of the watch when you're out on the course and you're golfing you can hit the action button as we've seen and it takes you to this screen with six icons on it we've already seen the scoring function it'll keep your score you can go in there and scroll around and see what your scores have been I've only entered one score for hole number 10 if that was wrong I can tap on that and go fix it uh, I can hit done so that's the uh, scoring selection the next one is this uh, golf club that will give you your average and maximum distance for whatever club you're considering using so for example my five iron I typically hit at 143 it's not very good uh, but I have hit it as far as 190 so you can scroll through the uh, various um, clubs and see how you've been doing a very useful feature down at five o'clock is a compass feature you tend to use this when you cannot see the hole and so if you're behind trees or down a hill um, you can use this and it will point at where the hole is and give you the distance it also will uh, work like the other yardage which is if you tap on that it will give you an elevation adjusted value if that is relevant to the shot you're on uh, continuing on the little white icon here at seven o'clock this is how you check your score when you're playing uh, so that'll show that I'm at eight um, which is even par on this screen you can also scroll it'll show you what your handicap is uh, how many steps you've taken etc you uh, this tends to uh, follow the uh, widget uh, thing which is you can add or remove what's shown on that screen through settings uh, and then let's continue on there's a couple more one is a pretty useful feature this thing at three o'clock which uh, in essence gives you those dots that you see on the course uh, layout view on the main screen it will tell you what the distance is to a hundred out 150 200 250 etc so if you're wanting to put your shot at, at 100 out if you've got a 291 club you can use that so it's somewhat useful and then finally the uh, this green icon up at 11 o'clock is the uh, shot uh, recorder and what that does is if you've enabled that or tapped that once during the game then as you're uh, playing on the course if you hit your driver for example and then begin walking up here at the top this section where it says hole one par four that will change into a, a distance number that will begin to increase as you walk or drive towards your next hole or rather your your shot so you can see how far your actual shot went uh, and that'll happen on every uh, every time you shoot uh, as long as that feature is enabled so that is the uh, advanced features on this second screen uh, and finally once you're done with the game uh, you can hit the end button and the that will do what it says oops excuse me uh, go back here and tap end 
and I can save it, I can go edit, I can discard it, or I can pause the game if you're taking a break on the turn. But I will discard it because I don't want to save this fake game. But anyway, that's how you do it. Uh, and it will save your scorecard if you're doing a real round, and then you're done. Okay, and finally, let's go through the remaining golf app settings that we've not otherwise covered. If you hit the settings button and go into golf settings, uh, scoring, um, the status selection of always ask, you can either have scoring always turned off, so whenever you start a game, it will not score. You can set it to on, where it will always score and won't ask you that. Or always ask when you start a round, it'll ask you if you want to keep score. So that's what I do. Stat tracking, we've talked about that. It'll ask you um, if you hit the fairway, penalties, etc. Club tracking, it will ask you um, when you're golfing what club you used. Still under scoring, do you want to keep score for one person or two? So you can toggle that on or off. Scoring method, um, I don't use this, but you can use an alternate scoring method, the stable forward method, which I've never used. And then finally, you can turn on handicap scoring, which has a set of uh, various options for uh, how to do handicapping. So that is the scoring settings. Uh, still under general golf settings is the driver distance. You can uh, change what distance you want uh, to say your driver will typically go. That shows you that line on that golf screen. Uh, there's tournament mode. Uh, if you turn tournament mode on, that will disable a couple of functions. The elevation adjustment for distance and the ability to... Uh, find distances to certain objects uh, on the uh, golf screen. And then the last one is big numbers, which is what you might expect. Uh, so if I go back and uh, show the golf screen, you can see here's the default um, font size for the numbers. If I go back into golf settings and scroll down here and say big numbers turn on and then go back you can see what you would expect, which is the numbers get bigger. Because they're bigger, you don't actually get a little layout of the golf uh, hole that you're on, nor do you get the information on the top. If you do still want to get that, you can tap on the right-hand side, and it will give you the normal screen you're used to seeing. Uh, but on the regular golf screen with big numbers, uh, this right-hand side does not show you what the hole looks like. So that is the final review of the golf settings and their various functions. Okay, in the last section of the video, I'll go over the remaining watch settings that I've not otherwise covered. So from the watch menu, you can hit settings, We've talked about watch face, clocks is just what kind of format you want on the clock, that's self-explanatory. And then the remaining settings, we've gone over apps and activities and widgets at the beginning. Watch face lets you pick the watch face, sensors and accessories. Uh, you can use club sensors um, and that is a set of white devices uh, that attach to the top of your club so it'll automatically identify what club you have. The compass is self-explanatory. You can calibrate that. Um, there is also the ability to add other sensors. You can get uh, a swing analyzer that you can attach to your club. Going back under phone, there is uh, whether or not the phone is connected, you can turn that off. You can prevent notifications from showing up on your phone. Connection alerts. You can pair your phone and you can sync with it. 
Uh, the user profile is where you can set up your age, height, etc. Activity tracking, um, it will do things like alert, uh, tell you to move when you're not moving, have goal alerts turned on, so that's uh, that. And then under system, you can have auto lock on, you can pick the language, the time format, the backlight. I happen to have uh, the timeout set to 30 seconds and brightness at 20. Um, you might typically want to lower the timeout to a lower number. I kept it at 30 seconds for the video, but typically I'll have that at about 5 or 10 seconds so it'll save battery. Uh, vibration is the what it says. You can have a low, medium, high vibration, and you can also have the do not disturb on, uh, control settings, is the um, thing that I showed you where you hold this button down. That's another way to get to the control settings, units, and USB mode. And this is where you can restore defaults. You can do a software update and see if there's software required. One note about updating the software on this watch is you actually the only way to do it is to connect it through your PC or your Mac uh, as of mi the making of this video you cannot actually update software via the phone application uh, so I think that is not a very useful feature and then about of course gives you the unit number and other information so that is the last of the tutorial I hope that helped it's a very capable watch. I really enjoy using it. And I hope this video was useful and you learned some things that you may not have known about your Garmin S60 watch. Have a good one.